From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Hello once again, my dear friend. This is Alan Bagg and we're on Wisdom for Life. And this week we're now rounding up on our teaching on the truth of partnership. And it's been a great study and I really want to encourage you, if you haven't been a part of it, if you maybe missed some of the programs, uh, the DVDs, the CDs are available and it's on our website. You can go and have a look at the, all the programs are there. You can go and download them, watch them again. Uh, but this is such an important subject. I really believe this is something that you and I need to be so aware of because I find too many Christians running around uh, without an understanding of what partnership is, just kind of living their own lives individually. I'm going to heaven, praise God. Now that is true. The Bible says, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20, that if you believe God, you believe His Word, you're established. That's settled. You believe Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you're going to heaven. But in between now and going to heaven, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's really where I've seen a lot of people struggling and battling. And it's just simply because of a lack of understanding in some key areas. Uh, the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not a lack of money, not a lack of a job or lack of a good husband or wife, lack of a good marriage. No, lack of knowledge. And that's so easy to clear up because God has given us all these truths in the Word of God. I really believe that God is presenting us with so many opportunities. And the reason why people miss opportunities is because they're not positioned correctly. And it's that positioning that has got... A, there are a number of factors involved. But I really believe one of the key factors is this area of partnership. And we've been studying from Philippians chapter 4... And we saw that Paul said in verse 19, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And as you recall, we found out that uh, too many people are just saying, My God supplies my need. My God supplies my need. My God supplies my need. And which is true if we recognize there's a big and in front of my God. And the scripture says, My God shall supply all your need. Now, we can quote, my God supplies my need if I got the revelation of all the other four chapters involved and I'm already partnered with somebody because that's what Paul was doing. He was praying from a position of partnership. My God, the God that I serve. He didn't notice, he didn't even say our God or the God or your God. And he said, my God, why? He's trying to show them because you connected with me. The God that provides for this ministry has anointed this ministry is now your God and as a result, He supplies your need. And why is that? Because of this thing called partnership. And that partnership is what's so critical. You go back to chapter 1 again, and we see here, He mentioned that in verse 5. He, well, verse 3 and 4 says, He thinks of them all the time. He prays for them with all joy. Verse 5, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. They had partnered with Him. They had made sure that no matter where you go, Paul, even if they don't look after you, we will always look after you. And he's teaching them this now through this letter. Because of that, you can trust God and believe God for provision in your life. Remember again, I said that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, Jesus said that if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive that prophet's reward. In other words, the fact that uh, we're involved in the ministry and we're getting people saved. Whoever makes sure that we are able to do that, they get the same credit for that salvation. Same credit. Let me show that to you from uh, the life of David, coming to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And yeah, we see what happened was that David was out with his men one day and they got back to their village, the town called Ziklag. And what had happened is the Amalekites had come into Ziklag and had, while David was gone, and they had uh, kidnapped all the wives and the children 
plundered all their houses, took all their treasures and everything, and then burnt Ziklag to the ground. And they, they rode off. So David and his men came back. They found their city all burnt, all their houses burnt, their families gone, and all their wealth was gone. And all the men freaked out. They all wanted to stone David. And David said, hang on for a moment. Just before you do that, let me go inquire of the Lord. The Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord. And he was praying, listening for what God is saying. And God said to David, take now all your men and pursue the Amalekites because you will surely catch up to them and recover all. And that's what I want you to see here. Uh, they, they ran off after these men. And as they were pursuing, running to go and catch the Amalekites, they got to a place called the Brook Besor. And when they got there with uh, with all his men, he had 600 men. When they got to Brook Besor, 200 men were too tired to go on. They just <laughs> we cannot carry on. So David said, okay, that's it. Everybody dump all your excess kit here. The 400 that are still okay to keep going, just take your weapons, let's go. And they went on a forced march and they caught the Amalekites and they fought with them from sunset to sunset the next day. And the Bible says that they killed them all. Just a few men, young men got away on some camels, but they got back all their wives and their children, all alive. They got back all their goods, all the wealth, and they went back to this river, Brook Besor. Have a look here. Let's read verse 21. Now David came to the 200 men who had been so weary that they could not follow David, whom they had also made to stay at the Brook Besor. So they went out to David to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless men, now, hang on, you know, these guys just fought a battle and they won a battle, but the Bible labels them as wicked and worthless. Now remember, wicked means twisted. They got the wrong way of thinking. The wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we've recovered except for every man's wife and children. Oh, thank you. That they may lead them away and depart. So he says, look guys, they can have their wives and their children back, but they're not getting any of this stuff. Now, you know what their twisted thinking was? We fought the battle, so it's ours. These guys were lazy. They're sitting here by the river. Why should they get anything? Now listen to verse 23. David said, my brethren, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given us. Come on now. We know we fought the battle, but we, if it wasn't for God, we would have lost. God gave us this stuff. He preserved us. He delivered into our hands the troop that came against us. Now, for who will heed you in this matter? Who's going to listen to you? But as his part, oh, we're back to partnership here. His part is who goes down to the battle. So shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. And so it was that from that day forward, he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this day. Now that to this day is quite an interesting statement because every time we're reading it right now, this day is this day. Now tomorrow, you take out your Bible, go read it, still says this day, keeps updating. So this is a truth that's going to be perpetuated through all eternity. What is it? Look at verse 24. As his part is who goes down to the battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. What's David saying here? He says, you know what, guys? The reason we could win that battle is because these guys looked after our stuff. If they had run with all their heavy equipment, who knows? I mean, if already 200 men are flaked out by Brook Besor, by the time they got the Amalekites, they may have lost two, three, four hundred more men. Maybe all of them would have been too tired and the Amalekites would have slaughtered them. But because these 200 stayed, they could unload all their heavy equipment. The 200 looked after that. Because they were protecting these other men's stuff, these other men could fight a battle fairly refreshed and as a result win and so the win was attributed to them fighting and to the fact that these guys looked after their goods. And so David says, because together we made this battle possible, we all share in the same spoil.
You got a hold of that? Now, how's that link into you and me? Well, when somebody partners, let's say the Lord leads a person to partner with us as Allen Bag Ministries, well, I have to travel, all right? So we got people here in our hometown. Uh, I go out of town. Now, I may be gone for two, three weeks, and let's say I have to leave my children behind because they're, they're going to school. My wife is staying here to look after them. But while I'm gone, somebody makes sure that my grass is cut. Someone makes sure that the, the church is run. Someone makes sure that the doors are open. Someone makes sure that everything's clean. Someone makes sure my wife and my kids are all fine. Uh, somebody's making sure. I don't have to worry about those things. I know I've got partners that have got my back. If I have to go to an airplane and say, listen, I need to get from here to wherever I'm preaching, I need a ticket. There's partners that say, don't worry, we'll pay for that. I know I don't have to stand in faith. I don't have to say, God, please, please, I need an airplane ticket. I believe I receive it. Now I'm focusing my faith on getting an airplane ticket. No, my faith can now be targeted because I don't have to worry about my accommodation. Don't worry about my food. Don't worry about the travel. Don't worry about my family. All of that's put aside. All my faith is focused on the preaching of the word to reach the hearts of those who do not, yet know, do not yet know Jesus. And as they get saved, it is a battle with the enemy. I, through the anointing that removes burdens and destroys yokes, that enemy is settled, is, is, is fought off that person's life. And they stand up in the name of Jesus and give their life to him. I could succeed in that battle in leading someone to Jesus. Now, who gets the reward for that? I do. I get a reward for leading that person to Jesus. But the person that made sure my home was looked after, that made sure I got there, that made sure the people that made sure that I could do this, that made sure that there was a hall to preach in, that made sure all the equipment was in place, all those people, they won the battle together with me. And even though somebody may be back home and doing something very simple like emptying out the dirt bins in this building while I'm away, that person has exactly the same reward. Now that's something to celebrate about. There is a great power when you connect with the anointing of a ministry because now that reward is yours as well. And so that's exactly what David was saying here. That's what Jesus was saying. You receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive his reward. If, if you were a part of the battle, the part who goes down to the battle, and the part who stays by the supplies, they share alike. Every person on my team gets the same reward. And every person involved that gives into this ministry, prays for this ministry, supports this ministry, gets the same reward. And that's true for any... You know, I keep talking about it as Allen Bank Ministries. Obviously, I'm speaking from the perspective of we have partners. But as the Lord leads you, it's very important that you know where you are partnered. Uh, you may be, any individual may be called to another ministry. And it's important to know that because the Bible says that it pleases God to set each member. He sets each member as He pleases. And so it is important what anointing you tap into. I don't just want to send every little letter that comes and every cry on television, please, you got to send money. You don't give. We need this. we got to have that. Now, there are times that I give out of compassion. I give to someone who's poor because I want to help them. It's an instruction of Jesus. I do give into these things. But when I'm sowing seed, I must make sure that I'm sowing into the right anointing. It's critical because that anointing, I must be led by the Spirit. God knows what I need. Let me show this to you. Come with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. And we see here the account of where Elijah had proclaimed a drought. And we know the king Ahab wanted to kill him. So God took him to Brook Cherith. And while he was there, uh, ravens came to give him bread and meat. And the water was flowing in the river, of course. But then when the river dried up, God said, go down to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow there to look after you. Now, why are the widow women? I mean, there's lots of people in the town. God had a specific thing set up for this woman. And he goes down to Zarephath. And the Bible says here, it says verse 8, 
the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose, went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, there was the widow gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Now understand, a cup of water in a time of drought, that's a sacrifice. So, verse 11, she was going to get it. He then says to her, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now listen to her response. As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. And she goes on to explain, she's only got a little bit of flour left, a little bit of oil, and then she's going to prepare it for her and her son. They're going to eat it and they're going to die. Elijah says something amazing. He does not say, please excuse me. I apologize. I didn't realize you were so difficult, uh, in, in such a difficult place, so bad off. Don't worry, you don't have, I'll go find food somewhere else. No, he says in verse 13, do not fear. See, we need to have that in our lives. A man of God that can encourage us to go to a higher place of provision. He says, do not fear. Do as you said, but make me a small cake from it first. Bring it to me. Afterward, take some for yourself and your son. Hang on, didn't he just hear she doesn't have enough? She's only got enough for her son? No, he was setting her up. And thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Now listen to verse 15. She went and did according to the word of Elijah. Once again, 2 Chronicles 20, 20. You believe God's word, you're established. Believe his prophets, God sends a man into your life. And when you obey what he says, it propels you to a place of prosperity. And he says here, she went away, did according to the word of Elijah. She and he and her household ate for many days. Every day they would go back to the flower. And you can just imagine her thinking, I wonder if it's empty today. She gets there, there's enough for the day. And she makes cookies and cakes and bread and whatever. And they all eat and you know, used it up. And there would have just been a little left. And she'd go to bed that night and she'd wake up the next morning. Oh, I wonder if there's enough now. The man of God's still here. But she goes there and it was provided for again. As long as she kept providing for that man, he, the anointing the anointing that was on his life was flowing into her household and she had continuous provision. So it is important who we partner with. It is important who we connect with. And so I do encourage you, listen for what the Lord is saying. Where is He calling you to partner? When He does, tie into that. You know what? God's setting you up. He's setting you up for provision. He's setting you up for supply. He's setting you up for provision, protection. Whatever's missing, God will connect you with a ministry where the grace and anointing is on that ministry. will be able to move into your life. And so trust God. Spend some time with Him. Say, Lord, where should I partner? Where should I be a part of? Because I want to see that grace and anointing flow in my life. I trust this week you've learned something. We've all learned together the truth of partnership. Now I want to share something connected with this in the terms of your seed. You'll enjoy this. And I'll see you right after. 2017 is yours! We are heading into a year where I believe God has given us a promise, but He's calling us to walk with Him. Walk with Him. Walk with Him. Walk with Him. And you will see heaven, heaven, invading, invading. Walk with Him. Walk with Him. You will see heaven, heaven, invading, invading. Heaven has been talking behind your back that something amazing is about to manifest. God wants to do these awesome things in and through your life, but until you take a step, nothing will happen. You are born of God. You are supposed to overcome the well. You have the capacity, you have the capability, you have the grace, you have the anointing, you have the backup, you have everything within you to be able to invade the earth. Heaven, heaven, heaven invading us. We're going to see, see your glory, see your power, see your, power. See your anointing. See your anointing. Walk, with Walk with him. Walk with him. You will see heaven invading us. I want to share with you the grace of God that has manifested through you. Alan Bag Ministries is focused on plundering hell and populating heaven. Come here equipped so that we can manifest Christ to the world. 
By obeying the Lord's commission, Jesus is building his church in many ways. There are people hungering for those examples, for people in their lives who could just share with them the Word of God. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church impacting many lives in all our locations. It's great to be one church in many locations. H2O is our youth ministry, quenching the thirst of our young people stepping into their ministries. The Bay Air Force is our children's ministry that are helping shape our younger generation. Our television program is reaching to many homes across Africa and Europe. We are seeing the blessing manifest in the lives of our people. We have also reached out to partners and their families through faith encounters and through encouraging partner letters. Significance is our women's ministry, helping many women to manifest God's love and life in the community. Thank you once again, family, for all your hard work. We also run an internationally accredited Bible college and reach into the lives of many leaders through our ministers' conferences. Global Outreach is our outreach arm focusing on church planting, reaching into prisons and impacting the community through job creation and helping many people in need. We also give into the church in other countries through mission trips. When you partner with Allen Bank Ministries, you are directly connecting yourself with every soul that is saved and every person whose life has been changed through this ministry. If you would like to partner with Allen Bank Ministries, contact us at these details or visit us online. We will be sending you this partner pack that will encourage and equip you with the understanding with God's power at work through you as the child of God. Be assured that the rewards we are receiving are also accredited to your life. You will also experience the grace of God that is on this ministry working effectively through your life too. So join Alan Bank Ministries in partnership and make a difference in this world. I really trust that the concept, the understanding, the revelation of partnership is now a reality for you. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again and again, it's important that you're led by the Holy Spirit to make sure that you partner where the Lord pleases to put you. Uh, you need to be partnered with the right place. That Those connections are important. And I want to be a part of the ministry that God's called me to be a part of. Why? Because I want the flow and anointing that He desires in my life. And so many of you have been led to partner with us here at Allen Bag Ministries. As you know, on a Friday is the day for offering. And again, I want to keep stressing it. It is so important that we don't abuse the truths of the Word of God. This is not for fundraising. It's not trying to say, everybody, please send as much money as you can. This is something that is important. There are people that are moved by God to give into our ministry. That makes them partners. And I take that very seriously. And so I want to make sure you understand as a partner what that means. And once again, Philippians chapter 4 and if you have a look in verse 15, Paul said, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me in giving and receiving, but you only. And there are people that have given into this ministry. He says, Even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Because of your giving, we may not go to Thessalonica, but we can go to Durban, we can go to Johannesburg, we can go to Vinduk, we can go you know, to various other places and reach out with the gospel of Jesus. And not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. And that is my desire, that if you've decided to sow into this ministry, I want you to know there is a fruit that's coming back to you. Indeed, I have all and abound. This ministry is taken well care of. God really provides every need. He does it through wonderful people like you and generously. And we've seen every bill paid for. But praise God, he has the key. Verse 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's the prayer I want to pray over you today. And so if you are wanting to sow into this ministry, there are the details on the screen. We've got a very easy way to do it online now. You can go to our website and you can go ahead and give whatever you're wanting to give as the Lord has led you to do it. But I want to pray over you. If you've made that decision today, let me pray this prayer. Father, thank you for my dear partners. As they have sown into this ministry today, 
all those that you've moved, even our friends that are giving today. I pray, Father, that you would increase them more and more in the name of Jesus. My God, you supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I believe it's done and I give you all the praise and thanks for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. That's done then. Settled and I stand in agreement with you. Every need is supplied. Well, it is the weekend. We're going to be getting together in our various places of worship. I really want to encourage you. Make sure if you're not yet in a spirit-filled Bible teaching church, get to one. Be a part of what's happening in that town. Let that pastor know. You know what? I'm here. I'm committed to the Word of God. I want to be a part of what you're doing. And I promise you, there is a reward involved there as well. If you are in Cape Town, come along to one of our services. We've got a number of campuses now. You can see there. Our announcer will let you know about them. And uh, come along. And if I'm live in any one of the centers, please come down and come say hello. Just shake my hand. I'd love to meet you and just see who you are and that, that you're watching the program with us. Well, you have a great weekend. We're going to get together again on Monday. I look forward to seeing you there. This is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Know that you are being prayed for over every day. And know that we are in agreement with God's promises manifesting in your life. When you partner with us, you will also receive a partner pack that will both build your faith and give you understanding of the difference you are helping us make. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. If you are in the Cape Town area this weekend and would like to be part of the Bay Meeting Together in multiple locations, join us at any one of our Lyling Centers for an exciting time in the presence of God. It is one church, multiple locations. One church, one vision. For any information regarding our services, times and locations, please visit us online or contact us at these details. Wisdom for Life has made this week's programs available on CD and DVD. For you to purchase the series, just call our number or write to us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Quote this code and you will have your series on the way to you without any delay.